And anyway, uh, there is nothing better for a moderator than to delegate the job of discussing six very, very tales of yield improvement. And there is nothing better, uh, there is no better discussant than Stan Wood. He's a senior program officer, uh, agriculture development uh, with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And I think he'll do an excellent job bringing all of this together, which then leads us to reflections by Mark and Q&A. Thanks, Stan. Please come to the podium and thank you. Uh, I hope I'm allowed to fail after this uh, remarkable introduction. Uh, it's also great for me to be here. Um, since I worked for Mark, it was more, uh, you know, it was the, we were the people who were trying to drag Mark down, so we were not sort of working with him to raise him up, but probably put him at great sort of risk. So, yeah, I've tried to stick to the task of trying to really just uh, dig in and understand what I've heard, um, and try to bring out a few what I think may be salient points, and whether even this is a fair question to, st to ask just about yields in isolation of everything else. Um, so the first thing I want is just reflection on Prabhu. I mean, Prabhu's video itself had many of the elements that I think are worth, worthy of sort of digging deep. And one of them, and it's uh, something that we as donors face, and you know, you will, uh, as a policy institution, uh, by the time uh, Prabhu had finished his talk, he had mentioned every particular thing uh, that we see. And this is always the problem. And it always comes back to, uh, you know, Hazel and Fan, and uh, we need R&D, we need uh, sort of education, we need rural roads, we need more of those things. The problem is, how do you prioritize, and what is the sequencing, and what policies actually make sense in what context, and how do countries make those decisions? Where do they get that information from? Is that something that can come out of uh, modeling and analytics, or what is, that, what is that knowledge base that we don't yet have, it seems, the, the collection of evidence that allows us to be lots smarter than just coming up with that generic set. So I think that is a real issue. We, we and others, I guess, have all tried to crack that up by investing in, uh, I think, as, as Susan Thompson and I met coming in here, doing some re, you know, retrospective look at the history, what have we learned, and how does that apply to different country contexts? Every con country context is, is different. Um, I think it also, and I want to come back to this a little bit, is do we even have also the right tools? I mean, our tools are very inadequate relative to the real world complexity. And okay, they're models, and by definition are simplifications of the real world, but maybe they are too simple uh, to, to you know, look at the heterogeneity that we, that we heard about before. Uh, the other thing that sort of Prabhu talked about was, um, and I think we would all sort of empathize with that, is uh, moving from uh, sort of, you know, these uh, large-scale uh, sort of, I would say, monoculture systems to more sort of integrated uh, systems that maybe use resources in a better way, certainly in some of the geographies we'd like to work in. But uh, you've only got to look at uh, the, the main commodities that are growing now and the deficiencies we already have in countries around uh, agricultural R&D systems. So the ASTI data would tell you there's not enough investment yet going on even in the places where we do work or there are countries with R&D systems to look after the crops and the livestock products that really are at the center of that. So, uh, you know, how is that funding going to be? There's lots of things we don't know about that if we want to enrich that R&D system. And many of those crops have much more of a sort of public sector uh, sort of role and, uh, you know, ob obligation or p p potential to pay for that. Um, the other thing is um, the fixation on breeding. Um, there are many, and I think this question about integrated approach, I mean, if you look at the, if you look at a household survey data, the, the difference between the, the yields of the lowest quintile and the highest probably is probably two, three, four. So it's actually being achieved. It's not, it's not magic to get that new. If we could just raise up the lowest farmers to the highest farmers, uh, we, we don't necessarily, I mean, we always need breeding. That in the end game, that's the long term in the end game is the productivity you would get from, from that genetic gain. But in the short term, we have a, a, we have a big win to make getting from the lowest average yields to those higher yields that are being. So where is the the research that's being done on agronomy. Uh, so, you know, what would we do with better blended fertilizers? What do we do with better application rates, better knowledge of those things? Um, the other sort of side of that as well is, uh, even if those things are available, we know there are tremendous barriers to, to adoption. Is that, 50, is that my age coming up there, or is that the time? <laughs> 
Oh, I, mean, I hope it's my age because it's getting less. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, the question of a sort of extension and so um, the, the notion around what do we need to do in terms of getting better uh, targeted in time and space information to farmers that they can use that to make better, better decisions. So uh, I guess since my time is coming down, um, really understand it. Well, I do, just one thing I would say is, and uh, several speakers have talked about that, is maybe enough information to unbundle that yield gap. What is actually driving in different locations? Is it, is it uh, pests and diseases? Is it fertilizer? Is it sort of uh, socioeconomic constraints? What are those? If we understood those better, we would be able to prioritize our inputs and our policies in, in uh, better ways. Um, I was going to say something else, but uh, my, I'm in minus one second, so I'm going to stop there. Thanks a lot, Mark. <laughs> Thank you, Stan. There is a Q&A, and I'm sure you can bring in your remaining points right there.